Okay, hello, Michael. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm really excited to talk with you about this. I'm a big uh, time travel and canon and all that stuff nerd, so I love talking about this stuff. So, uh, diving in, when you came on, was the Loki Endgame setup that kind of kicks everything off in the trailers and everything established as the starting point for this show, or was that something you got input on? That, that was, we, from very early on, we knew... Uh, well, I learned, I, w I was told under cover of darkness what was going to happen in Endgame with Loki uh, and that he was going to disappear um, through that portal with the, the Tesseract. And, and so we knew that was what was going to kick off the events of our story. That that's what fans would see in Endgame. Uh, and then the question would be, where, where the hell does Loki go? And so I, our job became, all right, what's on the other end of that portal? Um, Endgame's time travel is quite heavily debated in terms of the internal logic. Even the writers and directors don't fully agree. I wanted to get your take on that whole thing, specifically the ending and whether Captain America was in a new timeline or the existing original timeline at the end. Um, I, you know, I think to get my take on the on the time travel in, in Endgame, you're going to have to watch. Uh, you're going to have to watch Loki. Uh, okay. because, because that's, you know, the, the, the time travel and in game that that's, that's time travel is the Avengers. And as those characters understand it and experience it, this show, uh, it's experienced and explained by the time variance authority. And, and so, uh, m maybe you'll get a slightly different take that, that answers some questions and, and perhaps poses some new ones, poses okay. some new questions. Um, and how did the existing use of time travel and Endgame and the multiverse has been mentioned many, many times play into how you built the TVA, this amazing uh, time variance authority? Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was really exciting to just say, all right, we're going to build a whole new corner of the MCU um, that polices all of time. That was especially exciting coming off of 10, 11 years of the MCU, where there quite literally is so much history. To, to draw from and to reference and everything that that made our lives as writers easy um, or easier. And so, you know, then it was just how do you and when you're making a show about a, a, a time travel agency, how do you um, establish them in a way that that doesn't undo the the excitement and the stakes of everything that came before, but but perhaps shed some new interesting light on all that stuff. When it came to coming up with TVA, obviously the timekeepers, all of that's in the comics, but this is quite different. And obviously you're building in the MCU rather than Marvel comics. How, where did you draw inspiration from, from all this? Um, I mean, a million different sources. Uh, Blade Runner for sure was one. Mad Men, Toy Story, uh, Armageddon, um so many so many things we we just we all talked about our favorite movies about our favorite science fiction stories and everything and and we just you know it, there there was nothing off limits in terms of inspiration for for this show because it truly felt like wow we can go anywhere we can go any time uh so don't don't put any cap on our imaginations um, another big challenge with this show is Loki, because this isn't the Loki that we saw die in Infinity War, but, you know, from early in the timeline. So you have an audience that knows Loki's entire history, but then a version of the character rooted in the past. How did you approach writing that? Was that a challenge? I think it was a, a challenge in one way, but also perhaps the most important opportunity of the show. Um, a challenge in the sense that, yes, the audience has seen... 10 years of stories with this character. They've seen him arc out in a way and, and, and have one version of a redemptive arc. This is a new, another version of Loki who hasn't had all that experience. It was really important to me that we tell a totally new story, that we're not just treading old ground. And so in that sense, I was very excited to have a kind of slightly less developed Loki to play with. Um, looking at you know the whole MCU, every character goes through amazing journeys. 
Loki is perfect to dip into him at a certain point. If it wasn't for Lo- if it wasn't Loki, if you were to pick another character to explore from an earlier stage in their journey, who would you pick? That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> you know, I love I love Bucky. Uh, I, I think Bucky is a great character, like Loki. That's somebody who has a lot of a lot of trauma uh, that that they're working through, but yet there's a real vulnerability and and likability there. So uh, I like I like Bucky a lot. And, you know, speaking of Bucky, obviously we recently saw him on Disney Plus. Has the success of WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier um, made this more nerve-wracking for you? How's it changed the view after making Loki kind of in a bubble to know now these shows can have a phenomenal impact? Well, look, my, I, I was, it was nerve-wracking from the moment that I realized our writer's room was right next to the WandaVision room. And I would walk by and see what Jack Schaefer and those guys were doing next door and realize, wow, that, that show is going to be something special. Um, we always knew that the expectations were going to be great. We we're going to have big shoes to, to fill following those two shows. So uh, ner- nerves have been racked for quite some time now. Um, and obviously next you have worked on Doctor Strange 2. Uh, I don't want to ask any questions about it because you can't answer anything, but do you begin to feel that you're becoming the custodian of the MCU multiverse now? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I I think that, you know, we're, we're everybody, all the filmmakers and writers of the MCU are all custodians of this thing because we all end up uh, both creating problems and solving problems for one another. Um, so if I can just create problems for myself and not for for some other poor writer, I, I guess that makes life a little bit easier.